Now it should be painfully clear, the, the only way to actually lose weight is with a low carb, vegan, raw, carnivore diet. As soon as you make a nutrition video, no matter what you've done, no matter what your expertise, people lay into the comments about their experience and how you're wrong, you're working for big sugar, you're having all these chemicals, uh, sorry to those who commented who I've called out, but honestly, you're entitled to your opinion, but, but unfortunately your opinion is wrong. <laughs> it's a giraffe! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, so whatever works for you is absolutely fine. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what has worked for me in terms of getting to my leanest ever. I'm going to run you through how I got ready, how I got to my leanest ever, without being tired, without being hungry, while keeping up really good quality training. Now despite what I just said about all your comments, leave your comments of what you've tried, what's worked for you down below, and while you're at it, please like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot, and it makes me more motivated to make more videos like this. Do it now, smash like. Eat more, train more. Now it takes some confidence to do this, because you need to eat more first, to be able to train more, and it's not overnight. You don't just suddenly develop an ability to ride an extra 10 hours a week by eating lots. But if you gradually build this up over time, eat a bit more food, train a bit more, you burn more, you eat more, you adapt more. Because you burn more, you lose more weight. It's just a never ending spiral. Well, until you run out of time to train. Now if we ignore performance for a second, and we just simply talk about weight, weight loss, weight gain, weight maintenance, it's a simple matter of physics. So I'm gonna jump off the bike, because this involves a little bit of maths, and uh, Riding up a little hill while breathing and uh, trying to do some equations is not the most simple thing to do. So at the end of the day, it's all about energy. So what is energy? Well, it cannot be created or destroyed. You hopefully learnt that in school science class. But when it comes to, to riding, energy is going to come from fat, from protein, hopefully mostly from carbohydrate and fat. Now in terms of energy burn, the first thing is you simply exist, don't you? Hopefully. You're here on this earth, it just takes energy to exist. Now this is your basal metabolic rate, what it takes to exist, and you can plug this into any online calculator and it's going to give you a reasonable estimate of how much it'll take you simply to survive. Now depending on your job, your daily activity, outside of exercise, then you can make a reasonable assumption about how much energy you're actually burning just per day. Now we get to the, the interesting bit, so riding. So you might have seen kilojoules of work done on your screen, especially if you've got a power meter, then it'll actually be quite accurate as long as your power meter is accurate. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! There's no way that could be right! Now kilojoules and calories, you hopefully know, are different things. And when we talk about diet, things like that, we tend to talk about calories. There's 4.18 kilojoules per calorie, and we tend to be between sort of 20 and 25% efficient on a bike. Now, I've been in a lab, um, and I know that I'm roughly sort of 24% efficient, so it tends to be one kilojoule of work on the bike is one calorie burned of energy for me. Now, a lot of people will be a little bit worse than this in terms of one kilojoule will actually be a little bit more than one calorie burned, but within reason, if you just take the kilojoules and use that as the calorie number, that'll be a good starting point. And why is this? So a watt is a joule per second. 1,000 joules is one kilojoule. So if you know the power you're riding at and the time you're riding at, you can work out the kilojoules burned. We can then apply this factor of kilojoules of work done through the power meter, how uneconomical the body actually is at using metabolic work to create power output on the bike. And therefore, therefore you add that basic metabolic rate, that little bit of physical activity factor for day-to-day -day tasks and the riding energy and now you know how much you burn per day. So is it as simple as creating a little bit of a deficit under that number every day and just losing weight? Well, you can do that, especially if you just want to lose weight. But if you want to train hard, perform well, there's a bit more nuanced way to do it. And this is what I've been doing. So during training, there's obviously a few things you want to be aware of. One is energy to train. Two is recovery from training. And three is, of course, just staying healthy, good immunity, good hormones, things like that. So I hope it goes without saying, fruits, vegetables, fiber, things like that. Of course you should be having them, but I'm going to talk more about just the macronutrient perspective now. So protein. Repairs your muscle is important for lots of other functions too. How much should you get? Ideally aim for 2 grams per kg of body weight. Basically no matter what you're doing for the day, just non-negotiable. Aim for that, you can go a little bit higher if you want, but around there. Now for fat, about 60 to 100 grams a day. Depends how much energy I'm burning for the day, but around there. You should never need much more than that. You definitely don't want to go too much less. Fat's really important. Now try and get it from non-saturated sources, of course. That can stay relatively static as well. So of course it's the carbs that you're actually going to manipulate. So now, talk about how I'll change energy balance day to day based on my training. To keep it really simple and high level, if I have a big day, then I'll create a larger energy deficit. 
So I talked about energy deficits just before. Do you want just a small energy deficit every day? And I don't think that's the best way to do this. And the reason for that is you need to fuel for what's coming up and recover from what you just did. You also need to think a little bit about what type of substrate you're burning during exercise. So what happens is people commonly think about a 24 hour period of eating and they go, oh, I need a, a energy balance or energy deficit, something like that. But the reality is the body doesn't work on a 24 hour cycle. It works consistently. You want to plan your energy deficit out in advance and you want to be looking in terms of scale of a, a week or, or more potential. So what I do is if I had a really big day, I create a larger energy deficit and this, you can handle this because you're still eating so much in total and a lot of what you're burning will be fat. You're not creating this massive carbohydrate deficit as long as you still eat enough carbs. You can have a reasonably big energy deficit. I'd put this at sort of seven or 800 calories if I was burning say 5,000 calories for the day, which is a lot. Most people won't be burning that much. So you might want a smaller deficit. Then on an easy day, well, let's even say a day off. If you try and be in an energy balance, you'll probably be starving because the amount of energy you're consuming is so much less. So what I do on these days is have a small surplus. This both stops you being starving on that day, but it also helps you recover, helps you repair, helps you replenish glycogen. Because remember, the thing you're manipulating in terms to get this energy deficit up or down is carbohydrate, restores that glycogen for the next day, for the next big session, then you're ready to hit that session hard, create a little bit bigger deficit there again. And so you just have to make sure that over the course of a whole week, you've got an energy deficit that is gonna help you lose weight, but it's not too excessive. Now the numbers for this will vary, you'll need a little bit of trial and error. Not getting this right is one of the biggest issues I see. So people tend to create too big a deficit on their big days on the bike because they're just not used to having to eat that much. Then on a lighter day, they eat too much. And part of the reason for this is because they created that big deficit on the day that's meant to be an easy ride or something, the power output's even easier than it should be. The duration's even shorter than it should be. And because they had such a big deficit yesterday, they're so tired, there's so much stress that they're really hungry the next day and they overeat. So not only are they riding less, doing less power, doing less training overall, but they're probably still eating the same amount or more because they distributed it wrong. So fixing this is one of the biggest things to this method. So how do you know how much you are eating? How many carbs, how much protein, how much fat, how many calories? Well, for me, I was really going hard at this uh, in preparation for a race I really wanted to do well in and it's got some big hills. So I was weighing everything, tracking everything. Now you don't need to do that. Now this has such bad connotations associated with it. People starving themselves, restricting themselves, things like that. When you're training a lot like I was, it's actually more the opposite. You're making sure you're getting enough because so often you don't realize how much you need to eat. Now, if you're not doing crazy volume and high power, it's gonna be a little bit different for you, but don't think of it as a way to restrict things. Think of it as a way to be sure you're having enough. Now, you don't need to do this. It's definitely hard if you're trying to cook for a, a family or a flat or kids, or whatever, and you're trying to weigh out your food. You don't need to be doing that. It can help, but you don't need to. Just apply the same concepts, a little bit of trial and error. Over time, you'll get a feel for, am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? and you'll see things start to shift. Now, a reason why people go wrong with this is they don't know what to eat, things like that. They eat the wrong types of foods. So I'm gonna discuss how you sort of manipulate that and change things up there in order to make sure you're getting enough of what you want, not too much of what you don't. So what you'll notice, if you do a big weekend ride, you burn a lot of energy, and then you do track your food and you eat just normally, you'll eat tons of protein and tons of fat. Even if you're eating perfectly healthy, you're eating a nice, normal, balanced diet. And this is because protein is in all foods, fat is in most foods. And so you just end up with so much of it and there's no reason to go too excessive. So what I would do is change my diet a little bit on these bigger days. On a big day, they have less protein containing animal products, things like that. So, and I would replace those calories with carbohydrate up to a point where I needed them at least. Now what this does is make sure I was fueled for training that day, make sure I was not under too much stress, make sure I'm ready for the next day, but it keeps my total energy intake within check. And likewise the same with fat. People will go, oh I've done a big ride, I'll eat a bunch of like muffins and cakes and stuff, they're high in carbs, replace them. And yes they, they are, but they're also very high in fat and probably not good fat either. <laughs> um, but they're also just very high in energy because they're high in fat. So what I'll do is, yeah, really up that carb intake, focus on the carbohydrate containing food. Now on smaller days, I do the opposite. So on smaller days, hitting two grams of protein per kg of body weight is actually quite tough. If you're eating just over 2000 calories, maybe two and a half thousand calories or something like that on a, on a day off or a really easy ride, then actually getting that much protein can be quite hard. So this is the days where you do focus more on having 
having some meats, having some eggs, having a few more like animal containing products, potentially things like that. Now, if you're on a, on a vegetarian or vegan diet, just the same principles apply just with other foods. Now, another thing to be aware of is obviously if you're trying to lose weight, you're in an energy deficit, you're gonna be having to burn something of yourself to sustain that deficit. So hopefully this is mostly coming from fat, but some of it will be protein. Now that's not good, because that can involve losing muscle. So what I did to counteract this was obviously resistance training or gym training. So for the most of the period, so in two sessions a week, aiming to go quite heavy, getting close to the race, back this off to once a week, and only in the final couple of weeks was when I removed it completely. And this really just helps sustain some muscle mass. On those days, quite often, I would go pretty low fat, other than what I can't avoid from, from things like meat and stuff like that, uh, just because I still want a fair amount of carbs those days. And if you have a high amount of protein containing foods and a high amount of fat, then there's not much energy left for the carbs you want while still not over consuming. So it's just about balancing all these things, a little bit of trial and error. And at least for me, that's the reason I was tracking things because what can be measured can be managed. And if you know what you're consuming, how much you're consuming, you can actually make some changes, make sure you're getting these things right. And like I said, you don't have to do that, but this is what works for me. A can of VB there. Um, yeah, also avoiding that will, uh, will help you as well. So what about food on the bike? I've talked a bit before on this channel about glucose and fructose, how you can't spare muscle glycogen by eating during a ride, and things like this, so that'll be a topic for another video to go into the details of that. So on, but on the rides, what I would do is fuel them pretty well, because you want to make sure you keep performing good in the training, you want to make sure you're not creating too much of a stressful environment so you can train more and more and more. And basically you got into this pattern both on and off the bike, of eating more and training more, and then burning more and eating more and training more, and it's a bit of a cycle. Now obviously this doesn't work if you've got very limited training time, but if you're able to train a reasonable amount, that works really well. It's hard to give very clear recommendations on the bike because it totally depends on how long you're riding, how hard you're riding, how much power you're putting out, things like that. I would go very high on my very hard rides, so I'd be aiming for 80, 90, 100 grams an hour. Typically wouldn't go too much more over that, but uh, sometimes I go a little bit more on a, on a long hard ride, so I'm talking five, six hours where you're going either hard the whole way or putting some efforts in, things like that. On an interval day, be a little bit less, uh, and on an easy day it'd be not much at all. And the reason for this is because you can eat carbohydrate on the ride, but it doesn't spare muscle glycogen. So as long as you can do the ride without compromising quality, without creating excessive stress, then you can have that carbohydrate after the ride, and that will actually help replenish your muscle glycogen stores. And that's what you're after. So. You need to go high on a ride to ensure you're getting enough fuel but you don't want to go so high that you're basically having to restrict carbohydrate after the ride because that's when you're actually re replenishing the fuel tank. Now it's quite a complicated area, it kind of doesn't make sense when you first talk about it but that's how it works, you can't spare muscle glycogen and that means timing these carbohydrates so you've got enough on the bike but not too excessively uh, is really important. Keep the basics here, look at the total energy burn, basal metabolic rate, activity and riding for the day. Then make a plan in advance, how much under and over that energy balance are you going to be per day, try and make it come out to a deficit across the week. Then per day plan out your meals so you make sure you're getting enough protein, enough fat and then manipulate the carbohydrate around that and then change up your foods to ensure you're actually hitting those distributions that you're after. Be as precise as you want with this or you can just kind of do it a bit more to feel, see what's working over time. I hope that's useful, I hope it's helpful. This is what I have done, I hope it can work for you too. Give it a go, let me know how it goes.